Uh, Rosie. Um, hello, we're going to move on to the impact on women. And we note in your letter that you said, and you mentioned earlier, that you want to put um, women at the heart of, and children at the heart of getting this right, which is great. Because um, as a committee, we've received evidence that women are turning to prostitution whilst waiting for universal credit, or because they're worse off once they're on it. What are you going to do to protect these women? The previous Secretary of State suggested that they should just get another job and that work coaches are strategically placed to help. Do you agree with that? Um, the whole point of universal credit is to stop people getting into these extreme situations. And one of the ways I believe we can do that is by addressing this priority I set out for you earlier, which is to make sure that people can have access to that money earlier. And if people can have access to that money earlier, they are less likely to um, do ex have extreme responses, as, like the one you set out. So. I think that being able to make it clear that people can have an advance uh, on day one, if that's what they need, would be an important way of addressing that. Um, of course, women are in the higher range of the lower paid, so women will be both um, the winners and losers from universal credit in a way, but I believe overall they will be winners. I, if I may, Mr Chairman, just one example. I met an MP yesterday who said to me what a success Universal Credit had been in her area because they had... It, it was not. It was one of your own, actually. I'll tell you later. Um, who was, she, she was able to confirm to me that um, because of the role of work coaches actually engaging with women, there were a whole cohort of Muslim women who were much more engaged and were able to get um, assistance with finding real jobs rather than doing much lower jobs than their qualifications. So I'm hopeful that the personal nature of universal credit will be able to help a lot of women who are otherwise untouched in terms of the legacy system, not helped into work and really neglected. You mentioned Muslim women because um, Ruth and I are both part of APPGs that Universal Credit and Single Parents, where we've heard that uh, Muslim women are particularly badly affected by the two-child um, policy because you know there are various sort of cultural um, aspects to that. So, what's your thought on that? Well, the the two-child policy, um, I believe, is the right policy in terms of being fair to the taxpayer and being fair to the people who are receiving it. You know, it's about making sure that people make the same decisions that people on incomes have to make if they're on benefits, if they want to have two children or more. Um, I do think we can do more to help uh, make sure that women get the benefit of the universal credit payment. And so I'm going to be focused on making sure that the, uh, the main payment is made to the primary carer. And I'm going to be coming back, I hope, with some more proposals on that in due course going to move on about um, split payments. So Professor Alston found that women are particularly affected by poverty generally. And what can you do to ensure that the benefits system doesn't contrib contribute to or exacerbate that? I suppose you're sort of, you're talking about putting women and children at the heart of it, but, but practically, how do you think that could work? Well, roughly 60% of payments to couples are made to women. But I think we can do better than that <coughs> by ensuring that the payment is made to the main carer, and I'm going to be making some steps to address that. Um, I think there's more, because it's so important to me, having been a minister for women inequalities as well, um, I have you know, particularly made the point of having conversations, for instance, with the Home Secretary about the domestic abuse bill and making sure that I speak to the Secretary of State for Communities <coughs> and Local Government about housing to make sure that women can be at the centre of any policy making.